This evening we look at the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 15, verses 27 to 31. And again we hear Jesus' words, I tell you the truth, one of you will disown me. Jesus knows us better than we know ourselves, and we would do well to heed his warning and to hear his promise. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours today from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text this evening from Mark chapter 14, verses 27 to 31. Jesus predicts Peter's denial. You will all fall away, Jesus told them, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter declared, even if all fall away, I will not. I tell you the truth, Jesus answered, today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you yourself will disown me three times. But Peter insisted emphatically, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the others said the same. So far the text this evening. How do we talk about ourselves? question we might ask tonight. How would I introduce myself to you if I were new and you didn't know me? Well, I might give you my name. I'm Mark Ifaller. I might tell you where I was born. I was born in Iowa. I have a wife, four grown children, grandchildren. I might tell you that I've been a pastor for 30 years now, coming up this June. And in fact, I've been here three years. And as a part of my ministry, I was am retired from the Navy as a lieutenant commander and chaplain. We are comfortable talking about things, and especially those things in our lives that help to define us. Those things are important, and even if it's not intentional, we do spend time talking about ourselves, don't we? About who we are and what we've done in our background. But how well do we really know ourselves? Sometimes, we might think we know ourselves well. Was it Socrates that went around questioning people and felt that the most informed, the wisest man knew himself quite well? Of course, somebody else has said, in order to know yourself, you have to know what people are thinking and saying about you. So maybe we don't always know ourselves as well as other people maybe know us. If you're a child, do your parents know you quite well? If you're a husband or a wife, does your spouse know a great deal about you? Maybe even more than you know about yourself. They see how you are. They know what your choices are. And although we might really want to say, I know myself inside and out, the truth really is that sometimes we know what we would like to be or who we would like to be better than who we are at our core. Tonight, we might ask, who will introduce me to myself? Peter tonight would have done well doing just that. He thought he knew himself quite well. He's sitting in this wonderful upper room. Sure of himself, Peter, we know. Sure of himself, confident. Peter, the spokesman of the disciples, here with Jesus, sitting there at the familiar meal that celebrated year after year after year amongst the people of Israel, the Passover. He knows the Passover. He gets together. There's lamb. There's bitter herbs. There's bread. There's wine. There's a liturgy that's recited year after year. There's a meal. He's very comfortable and very confident in that setting. And, and it's not so different than you and I are. As perhaps Christians, we are accustomed to the Easter celebration or the Christmas celebration. We know how it goes. Although it may vary from year to year, we're very comfortable with the symbols and the colors and all of the things that have to do with church, Easter and Christmas. In fact, if we sit down at Christmas, maybe Dad sitting there by the tree, and there's a little devotional before we open our gifts, we might expect Dad to talk about angels, shepherds, about God's love, about the gift of the Christ child. 
And perhaps Peter and James and John and all the other disciples sitting around that table in the upper room this evening would have expected the same. Something we might expect would Jesus give a devotional on redemption, on deliverance, on what God's salvation is all about. But he surprises us tonight. He gets us off our stride, so to speak, because now at this critical junction in the meal, Jesus says something quite unusual. He quotes the scripture. But it's something that we perhaps would not have chosen. He says, you will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Of all the things to talk about that evening, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Now, a number of things are going to happen on this night that are going to shake the foundation of who Peter believes that he is. And this is the first of them. What does Jesus mean? He doesn't explain it, but he gives them a warning. He says, but after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. And then Peter, having heard this, declares, even if all fall away, I will not confident Peter. He's sure he knows how the evening will progress. They'll have the meal. They'll be the Passover. Then they'll go out and have a, have a hymn, uh, sing the psalms, go probably to the garden where Jesus likes to pray. He knows, or he thinks he knows, how that evening is going to progress. And it all begins with this quotation from the scripture. Not the message you and I might think. Even if all fall away, Peter says, I will not. Peter, Peter, Peter. Peter is Peter. What can you say about Peter? His assertion to Jesus brings Jesus' second warning, this time not just to the group, but to Peter himself. The familiar words, Amen. Amen. I tell you the truth. Today, yes, tonight, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. This isn't one of those weather.com storm watches where they think maybe the weather is going to do something and keep your eyes open because we might have a sudden change. This is a warning. This is a tornado warning. This is the kind of a warning which says don't go out of your house, don't get in your car, don't go to the store, go to your basement. If you don't have a basement, go to a secure place in your home and close the door. But Peter will not hear it. It seems as though Peter cannot conceive of what Jesus is saying. Perhaps he has his fingers in his ears. Perhaps he just simply doesn't want to hear what Jesus is saying. I will not desert you, Lord. I tell you the truth. Before the rooster crows thrice, you will deny me twice. Peter is oblivious. He says... Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the others sitting there around the table said the very same thing. Even if we must die, we will not disown you. Well, I guess the, the same could be said of us, couldn't it? That we oftentimes are sure of ourselves. We oftentimes feel like we know ourselves. And no matter what's coming, we're ready for it. Don't worry, we might say. Don't worry, Mom and Dad. I'm out with friends. It'll be fine. Or perhaps my girlfriend and I are in my parents or her parents' basement watching TV. Don't worry. It'll be fine. Or we're just going out for a drink. Nothing more. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. We're the same as Peter and the other gentlemen sitting around that table, aren't we? 
Don't worry, Lord. And oftentimes we feel that we can stand against whatever comes, but doesn't the scripture say, he who thinks he stands, watch out, lest he fall? And there is another place in the scripture where we find in Matthew chapter 26, Jesus saying to, to his disciples that very night, watch and pray that you don't fall into temptation. And coming back, he found them asleep. Asleep. The spirit is willing, Jesus said, but the body is weak. And so it is. So it is. And so sometimes we ignore the warnings that Jesus gives us as well in our lives. And we allow ourselves to come into temptation because we just don't believe that it will get the better of us. We need to hear those warnings. And here it is, Peter, the spokesman of the disciples, now walking with Jesus out of the city of Jerusalem, boldly, confidently walking through the dark to the Garden of Gethsemane, not knowing that he is walking not just in the darkness of the night, but into the darkness of sin and temptation. And he is ill-prepared for what is to come. He is ill-prepared. And we find ourselves, too, looking to ourselves at times. And when we look to ourselves and our own efforts, our own abilities, we find, like Peter, that we stumble and fall as well. How easy is it to turn to our billfold, to turn to our checkbook, to turn to our own resources, and forget to turn to the Lord, who is there to care, there to heal, there to forgive, there to aid. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Don't be like Peter. I tell you the truth, Jesus says, you will disown me. But you know what the real tragedy is, don't you? Peter didn't just miss the warnings. When he babbled on with his self-defense, concentrating on what he was going to do and going to say, Peter missed the beautiful promise of Jesus. And we might have missed it too. If we were to summarize this little bit of scripture, what might we say? Well, Jesus warned his disciples that they would betray him. Peter resisted that idea, said he would never betray them. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he denied it, and all the other disciples did as well. So, where is the promise? Where is the beautiful gospel promise that oftentimes gets missed? It's right after the scripture that Jesus quotes. And you'll find it familiar when I read it again. But after I have risen... I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Yes, you will all fall away because of me. Yes, this night will be brutal and you'll run in terror. Yes, Peter, you will deny me three times. But you know what? The shepherd may be struck down, but he will stand up again. The shepherd will stand up again with glory and power. I will rise again and I will go to Galilee ahead of you. There is the promise. These men will be forgiven. They will fall, but they will be forgiven because our gentle shepherd forgives the sins of those who believe in him. But there is a promise too on this night. The promise of the resurrection, which none of the men seemed to have caught, which none of the disciples heard that night, but a promise that was there just the same. How often do we look at the words of Scripture and gloss over those beautiful promises because we think we know it so well? How often do we feel so confident that we miss the beautiful things that God has had to say. Jesus pinpoints this promise. After I have risen, 
I will go ahead of you. And so we call upon the Lord tonight to not allow our ears to be closed to the warnings and encouragements of our Lord, but by His Spirit and Word to open our hearts and our minds, to open our ears and our eyes to see all of the beautiful promises that He has prepared for us there. And when we die and stand before God in glory, we won't have to introduce ourselves and say, well, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Mark Gefaller and, uh, and uh, this is who I am and I didn't listen to my Lord, I didn't hear, heed His warnings. And Jesus, when He introduces us to God the Father, He won't say, and this is Mark Gefaller and he's just some dumb idiot, he never listened to what I said anyway. We are known to our Father. We are known to our Savior. And he will say to his father, this is my brother, this is my sister, these are my family for whom I've died and for whom I rose and for whom I came again. Because despite it all, God's love for you is real. Despite whatever happens in your life, he will not abandon you. And when the time comes that we close our eyes in death, when the time comes that Christ raises our bodies from the ground, we will be with our Father. Because of Jesus, He will not disown us. Because of Jesus, He has already claimed us as His own. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you'd like to hear more on this or any other topic, please find us on the web at emmanuelnrh.net. Please join us for worship Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., Bible class and Sunday school at 10.30 a.m.